Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. I wanted to answer some questions about dry suits today from the questions that I found online and trust the internet to quickly turn to bodily functions. So let's answer some questions about dry suits. What happens if you fart in a dry suit? Well done internet, don't ever change. Okay, so the most that will happen is that your buddy will get really annoyed with you after the dive as they open up your, your zipper in front of them. However, this actually does pose a fairly interesting question and whether your buoyancy would change at all. And on the face of it all, no. Uh, your buoyancy shouldn't change at all because the amount of water that you're displacing hasn't changed. I don't think the pressure inside of your gut is high enough to create an expansion of gas volume sufficient to shift your buoyancy after that gas leaves your body. One thing that it might do is cause your auto dump valve to open if it's particularly sensitive and that might shift your buoyancy a little only enough to either tap your chest valve or inflate your BCD a little bit to correct it. Now, I have known divers to conduct some, let's call it anecdotal experiments on how deep you can actually fart underwater due to the pressure around you and they're extremely unscientific, unpublished, I might note, findings were somewhere around 14 meters. That was the maximum depth and that was in a wetsuit in the Red Sea. So it might differ in a dry suit, but I, I don't think it's a, a, a huge issue we should be thinking about. Can you snorkel in a dry suit? You can indeed. Um, it's not great unless you stay on the surface. Uh, personally, I had to do some duck diving in a dry suit during my IDC here in the UK because we didn't have access to a wetsuit at the time. I only had my dry suit and it was February, so it was quite cold. Um, but you still, of course, get that squeeze as you descend under the water and without a cylinder, you can't compensate. So it's best to stick to the surface and keep that shoulder dump valve closed to keep all of the insulation inside. And if you have a cuff dump, keep that either under the water or up out of the water. Cuff dumps don't work so great on the surface. They get a bit confused and they can often let some water in. I've also been snorkeling in the Arctic in a dry suit. So yes, you definitely can. Wetsuits are great and all, but in certain water temperatures, nothing can compete with a dry suit. Air is a far, far better insulator of heat than water is. And whilst a wetsuit will keep you warm for a while, I'd rather be in a dry suit and it's far easier to get into a dry suit than a free diving open cell wetsuit. So dry suits also help with your buoyancy uh, and keeping you on the surface because they are so buoyant. Um, you're just not wasting any energy trying to float on the surface when your dry suit floats itself. But yes, you can very comfortably snorkel in a dry suit. Can you pee in a dry suit? Sure, uh, but it's only advisable if you have a P-valve fitted uh, and even then it's not always advised if it can be avoided. If you pee inside of a wetsuit, it kind of mixes with the water inside and usually flushes out during the dive and after a good hose down later. In a dry suit, however, it's got nowhere to go but down to your socks. So your undersuit is going to do its best to try and keep you feeling dry, but it's not going anywhere until after the dive when you wash your suit inside and out. If you do have a P-valve fitted to your dry suit, then you're going to have a small valve on your thigh that connects to a short hose that connects to an external catheter that sticks to your tenders. And you just pray that all of those connections are 100% when you need to go. Because of this, some divers simply opt for adult incompetence underwear um, if they know that they're going to be on a very long dive and likely need to go during the dive. But it's always best to plan when you hydrate and roughly when you'll need to dehydrate on a dive. Why do I need to pee on a dive? 
This is quite interesting and it's basically a built-in automatic response inside your body. It's called immersion diuresis. When you submerge yourself in water, especially water that's cooler than your body temperature, your body starts to constrict the blood vessels around your skin and your extremities to help prevent heat loss and maintain body heat. Less blood flow to your extremities means that more blood is circulating around your core or the same amount of blood, it's just it's it's more in your core instead of your entire body, which is great to keep your body working and nice and warm. However, your body has a response to too much body fluids inside of your body, which now it's all centered around your core. It thinks it is. Now, your kidneys are told how much urine to produce based on the amount of a hormone called ADH is in your blood. With all of this extra blood is now flowing around your core instead of your extremities, there's more of that ADH hormone and your kidneys do as they're told and they produce more urine. And then, of course, you need to pee. Consuming caffeine can bolster this effect as it's a diuretic and it can interfere with ADH production. But basically the reason that you often feel the need to pee during a dive is quite simply because you're on a dive. Submersion in water causes urine production basically. What triggers the dive response? The dive response or dive reflex is another automatic thing that your body does when submerged in water. By wetting and cooling your nostrils and your face, your body taps into some really deep rooted reflexes and starts to prepare your body for holding your breath for longer times. Peripheral vasoconstriction, slowed heart rate, redirection of blood flow to the vital organs to conserve oxygen, release of red blood cells stored inside of your spleen, and heart rhythm irregularities help to prepare your body to be able to breathe or hold your breath for a longer time. Free divers will often use this natural reflex to improve their apnea times, but do be careful when submerging yourself in cold water because we also have another reflex when suddenly submerged in cold water to <gasps> gasp uncontrollably. And some people can inhale water when they fall into cold water, so it's very, very dangerous. But the mammalian diving reflex to slow your heart rate and do all that is caused by cold and moisture receptors in your nose and your face detecting that your face is underwater and the response has actually been measured to increase proportionally to decreasing water temperatures as well. So it is all about getting your nose and your face wet and cold. Now, I'm always amazed with the, uh, the pathway that the internet takes me on whilst asking questions online. We started off with just innocent, uh, just how or why a dry suit, and of course we ended up with apnea reflexes. But if you have any interesting questions, that um, by all means let me know down in the comments below. And if you type the Ask Mark hashtag into your comment, then I'll answer it on one of the Friday shows. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and of course head over to our website, simplyscuba.com, to take a look at some of the latest scuba diving equipment on the market today. Thank you for watching everybody and of course safe diving.